Hello everybody and welcome to the Whiskey Dictionary. My name is Bill. Thank you for joining me. So I'm going to give everybody just a couple minutes to pop in here and then we will discuss what we are doing tonight. So Tyler, I see you're in the chat. Uh, very sorry to hear about your team. Who do you follow? Who's who's uh, who's losing two to zero at the moment? Let's see. I'm very interested to know what YouTube does as far as alerting people. I know that it uh, sends an alert to your phone. Hey, go Habs, what's going on, man? Um, I know it sends an alert to your phone, but oftentimes I just don't get a lot of people in here for the first like couple minutes and find that interesting. Um, everything is blue. Oh, yeah, probably is. Ah, uh, shoot. All right, thanks. Let me fix that. Uh, didn't even notice that I was working on everything else. All right, do, do, do. Sorry, guys. Um, no, that's not what I want. <clears throat> Main menu, quick capture. There I am. Should have right light. There we go. All right. <clears throat> well, it's a little bright. Holy crap. <sighs> Boy. Damn it, I almost wish you didn't say anything. <laughs> I would have rather have been blue than such a lame start to this thing. All right, let's uh, fix this here. It happens. Um, where are, there you are. All right, contrast is going to go a little up. And I am super bright, holy crap. My head is glowing. Exposure, let's get rid of right light. I know better than the computer does. There we go. That's a little better. I'm still a little blue, but you know what? I'm not going to worry about it because, hey, there we go. <laughs> Holy crap, that's saturated. Let's white balance. There we go. Awesome. Okay. Sorry for that, guys. All right. So that was a fun start. <laughs> Let's try over. So tonight I have the Wheel of Mystery. I, uh... I really enjoyed doing this the last couple times, so I thought I would bring it back. I had um, eight more samples left, so I'm going to get right into those, so here we go. Alright, so that's what we got going on today. So first, let's take a couple minutes to get to see some of the people that are in the chat. I see Pressman. Um, hey, Isaac, thanks for joining us. The first live stream for you. Very excited to have you here. Um, okay. You got a notification on time. That's unusual. Good to hear. Uh, you know, they've got every technology in the world and uh, can't send out a uh, notification using, using um, Amazon. So, oh well. Well, I'm going to pop right into the first dram here. No reason to keep anybody waiting. So I'm going to let that spin for just a sec, reach out and grab something. One thing I will say is that there are two spice tree extravaganzas on there. Oh, duh. Let me, uh, let me belabor, or not belabor. Let me delay this for just a minute and let you guys know what I have on here. So I have Compass Box Spice Tree Extravaganza, Glen Scotia Victorian, Johnny Walker Green, 15 year, uh, Kilcomen Lock Gorm, 2017 release, another compass box spice tree, a tealing single malt, a talisker 10, and a Glengoin 12 year old. I believe that's all of them. Yep, that's all of them. So that's what I've got on the uh, table tonight. Uh, hey Derek, nice to have you in here. So um, let me get into one of these guys. So what are you guys drinking out there tonight? While I pop into one of these, um, put in the comments what you guys are drinking along with me. It's always nice to know I'm not drinking alone. And I'm going to choose this guy. What are you? Ah, the Glen Goyne 12 year old. Nice. I've actually been interested to have this one because I have never had it before. Let's go ahead pour this. You know, I really like these drinks by the dram, but I gotta say that uh, maybe maybe my house is too dry or something, but these little wax things, they crack and just, like, disintegrate. Um, it's a little little rough, actually. I'm gonna put that right here. We're gonna keep a, a little tally here on 
what I've killed. So I'm going to let this sit for just a minute, have a little bit of water. Ah, Kalila 12, nice. And Dickel number 12, very good. TGIS, isn't it, isn't today Friday? <laughs> Thank God I'm streaming maybe, I don't know. Uh, are you saying, are you, are you, really, no bookers? All right, hold on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this for you. That's bookers, booker, booker, booker. <laughs> Yeah, I will always have bookers on this stream. I am I am destined to always have bookers on this stream and same rules always as always apply if uh, If I get any live streams, then the boogers comes out. So ah yes, Eric I saw that our big dark uh, dark cove coming out earlier today I wasn't on your stream long enough to really see you um, give any notes or, or anything about it, but looks very very good i've actually been talking with ardbeg lately and um some of you that follow me on any sort of social media may have seen that i put up um a picture that i that i had of the ardbeg boxes that they sent me they ended up sending me four boxes they had the ugadal um cory vrecken the ano and then the regular tenure i've already done my review on the tenure so actually i sent my uh, brother in brother-in-law home with the half empty bottle of my original Ardbeg 10 and I kept the full one. Um, but those those reviews will be coming pretty soon. I actually almost filmed them, all uh, three of the other ones that I hadn't done yet yesterday um, after already filming five other episodes yesterday. So I, I opted to give them the respect that they deserved and go at them with a clean palette. I got to keep the bookers uh, for a little while because otherwise I'm going to lose any any um, semblance of taste. So Tom, you probably saw I will be leaving Facebook. <clears throat> Facebook does absolutely nothing for me. I've got 200 followers on there, which I mean, that's that's fine. But I just it was always an afterthought to put anything up on Facebook. And in general, like their interface is just getting atrocious. Generally, I don't really care so much about the whole privacy thing because anybody who doesn't think that they were, you know, listening and watching and, you know, keeping everything that you did for years is probably willfully ignorant. But um, in general, I just I just have no love for, for Facebook. So I'm deleting my regular account as well. So, hey, Jason, how you doing? Uh, let's see what else we got going on. We got Port Charlotte Scottish Barley, um, Pendleton, Pendleton. So I'm going to have to have a bit of a, you know what I'm going to do? You guys, before I get into that, I'm going to have a sip of this guy. So let me throw up my um, information here. Boom. So we got the Glen Goyne. I'm hoping I'm saying that right. Somebody correct me if I'm not. If, if I'm saying it improperly, throw some phonetic uh, thing in there for me. So the Glen Goyne 12-year-old, uh, roughly 45 bucks. So let's see what we get from the nose. I think this is sat out for a couple minutes. Should be should be opened up just a little bit. Hmm. Well, it's extremely sweet. Um, actually, one of the sweeter ones in memory. Um, so, hmm. Ah, you know what? Actually, I like that. So it says nectarine and syrup. Um, I totally see that. I was actually gonna say it's almost it's not like a maple syrup, but almost like a like a simple sugar with some sort of fruit in it. Uh, that's kind of what their direction I was gonna go, so that's pretty close. Let's see, what else did they say? Supported by toasted barley in the background. Hmm. Toffee, yeah. Yeah, actually, that's that's pretty, pretty apparent. Um, for me, I, I think that this is like, this is, this is honey, toffee, that simple syrup kind of thing with I don't know that I would go nectarine, honestly. I would. I don't know. I'm leaning a little bit more towards an apricot, and I get that nectarines and apricots, they look the same, but they smell different. So either way, it's some sort of citrusy fruit um, in a in a overly sugary sauce. All right, let me go ahead and take a sip of this. So cheers to all of you who are on my live stream and all of you watching in the future. So to you. Hmm. That's really good. Wow, I think I'm gonna have to pick up a bottle of this. I kinda wanna review this for real. Um, I don't have a pen or anything, but 
I'm going to put this over here, actually. Um, that's what I'm going to do. If I like them, I'm going to put them over here. If I don't like them, I'm going to put them over here because left is evil, right? So um, anyway, so I like this a lot. Wow. All right. Uh, it is extremely honey. Before I read any of the notes here, I'm going to, I'm going to give a, a shot. Um, you'll just have to take my word for it. Uh, so let's see. Honey is extremely prevalent. It's like, it's almost like squeezing it right out of one of those little honey bears right under your tongue. It's um, almost as thick tasting as well. What's the, what's the proof on this? Does it say? Um, 43%. So it is a little bit, a little bit thicker. Um, thicker is a interesting word. Um, let's see what else. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm, uh, I'm not getting a whole lot more than just that honey. Um, maybe a, like a very small amount of spice, but that wouldn't make a whole lot of sense. I think it's more heat, probably just from the, the alcohol content. Um, sometimes I, I get heat from alcohol and spice mixed up in my in my mouth. So anyway, I'm uh, I'm loving this. This is a solid a solid win for me. Um, I'm gonna take my time with this dram here. Let's see what's going on in the in the uh, chat here. Uh, Glendalock seven years. So um, <laughs> I'm costing you money. So what do you think, Russell? Um, have you opened it yet? Let's see. What's the ABV? The ABV, 43%, yep. Um, I do not normally buy anything under 46. No, I don't have that luxury because I have to, well, I don't have to, but I, I have the luxury of reviewing every every type of whiskey. So um, let's see. Sam, you've got the Aberlour 12 in hand. Nice. How much is a, a how much is that bottle? Just out of curiosity. Um, I find the 15 super sweet and super good. Yeah. Well, I mean, I would I would put this in the same camp. I know you said that you you have the fifty and have you you've never had the twelve. So um, I mean, what you said is pretty much how I would describe this as well. So um, what I was getting at. So one of the things that I've gotten somewhat used to, uh, somewhat recently, is that little community thing. So you've probably seen in your subscription that I'm able to do text posts now, which is awesome. Um, trying not to be too over over the top doing those just because I don't want to annoy people um, either but I'm trying to get some some real information back from you all so um, I'm curious have you guys been seeing those come up and is that something that you think just you guys being the, the live stream people always have a little bit more invested in this channel I prefer your or I value your opinions um, too much too little not you know just right I think I've done three or four of them in the last week and a half uh, three of them have been poles. So, let's see. Glendronic versus Glengoyne preference. I have. Have I tried the Glendronic? I don't think I've had Glendronic actually. So, uh, so far I prefer the Glengoyne. Let's see. Um, so who's watched my uh, flaming leprechaun video today? Did you guys all check that out yet? Okay, so yeah, so 65 bucks, that's that's not really relevant. So, Norway, huh? Well, cheers to Norway. Man, I'm loving this dram. I kind of don't want this to go away. I'm definitely going to be buying a, a bottle of this. This is one of the one of the nicer scotches, especially for the price. Oh, sorry. You guys got to remind me to take this thing down, because otherwise it's just going to hang up there forever. Um, actually, I could probably get rid of that. There we go go all right so you guys are saying just right so you like the post that's awesome I'm, I'm glad to see that I um I really think I can make like really good use of those but um, you know with the amount of subscribers that I have I, I always think like if I had like a couple hundred subscribers or even like a thousand you know like those are a thousand people who have really just been like hey this guy is great I really want to subscribe to him but once I have like a ton of them you know I don't want that many people, you're likely to get some fickleness, and I don't want people to unsubscribe because they feel like I'm spamming their their wall. So, hey, Santa Cruzin, yay! I'm glad you're here. How was your concert, or have you not gone yet? <laughs> Thanks, Derek. 
Thanks, Chris. Yeah, I, um, I'm glad you guys liked that video. I, I, so the flaming leprechaun thing, I don't remember if I talked about this in the last, in the last live stream, but one way or another, I'm going to talk about it again. So, um, let me make sure I've got this mic on the right setting. Yeah, I do. All right, cool. So flaming leprechaun. <laughs> so these guys, um, I met them at Julio's liquors. And as I said, I'm pretty sure I've talked about this before, but, uh, ended up talking to them for a little bit and they, they wanted me to do a review of their whiskey and you know fine not a big deal it's part of part of why i've i've been thinking about doing those those smaller distillery things for quite a while and this seemed like the great jumping off point i will say if anybody out there ever sees mad river out there don't buy it um it was the only whiskey i tasted that whole day that was just awful it tasted like it tasted like i mean like nail polish remover it was just it was bad um Anyway, I felt very bad because the woman that was uh, like kind of promoting it, she was, you could tell that she like really liked it <laughs> and, and just, oof. I had it with like three or four other friends that I was there with and all of us just turned our backs and we're just like, oh God, this is terrible. Um, at which point we went over and had some, some Flaming Leprechaun right after actually. So it was a good, good uh, save. Anyway, so the guys over there are just really nice and, and I was happy to be able to help them out with the video. Uh, but because I was doing a video on them, I just kind of thought it was a good opportunity to try to test out this new software I just downloaded. So all of my videos are made using Adobe Premiere. And that's for those of you that don't know, it's, it's like a professional video editing thing. It's like what they would actually edit a movie uh, that you might see it, you know, in the movie theaters in. And you can get your hands on it pretty, pretty easily. So it's like 20 bucks a month to have Adobe Premiere but it's $50 a month to have the whole suite of Adobe products. And I really have wanted After Effects because it lets you do cool things like, um, you know, like, uh, what do you call them? Wipes and, and text and everything. Like you can do some of that stuff in Premiere, but it never looks as good. Anyway, so I, um, I went to go sign up for it because I finally decided to pull the trigger. And as I was signing up for it, their website didn't let me do it. And I'm like, what the crap? So I contacted their support. And as I was talking to them, they were just like, oh, by the way, we have this uh, deal right now. If you sign up for a year, it's only $30 a month. And I'm like, okay, so you're telling me I can save $240 for something I'm going to pay for for a year anyway. So yeah, I went and did that. So 30 bucks a month, not bad. Um, anyway, so you guys will probably, as I learn that software a little bit more, you'll see my, my videos uh, evolving quite a bit because you can do so much stuff with um, Adobe After Effects. So anyway, let's see. Glenn Murray, Sherry, and Jameson Caskmate Stout Edition today. Cool. Nice. Yeah, I think you're really going to like that Glenn, uh, Glenn Murray, Sherry. It's really good. So I'm going to be doing another live stream next Wednesday, I believe. Um, haven't put it up yet because I have yet to confirm um, for the third time. <laughs> like I've confirmed a couple times, but this thing's been in the works for like two or three months. Um, you may remember her from the Scotch Test, uh, sorry, Scotch Four Dummies channel. Uh, Andy Reed, she was the she was an ambassador, and um, or she is an ambassador for Glen Murray, and she got me that bottle of sherry, and I um, I'm pretty excited about it. So I'm going to be doing a live stream with her next Wednesday. Uh, so Adobe Premiere is harder to learn than Final Cut Pro, but from what I understand, um, anywhere that I would get in it probably would be equatable between the two. Um, but I just prefer learning Adobe Premiere because if I ever need it in a professional sense, excuse me, I would rather learn the best software out there and then just kind of go from there. So, but as you guys know, I'm a tech guy anyway. So I want to make sure that whatever I'm learning is going to be useful for a number of years. Um, let's see. Santa Cruz and I called the shipper today and it was all right. Yeah. Um, let's see what else. Spamming all day long, Bill. Uh, all right, Santa, did you have any luck when you, oh, boo, you didn't. Yeah, I was a little behind on the chat there. So what were you, what were you uh, trying to catch? Anything in particular? We're a bunch of guys here sipping whiskey. Most of us have probably been fishing before. Might have some, some uh, ears that actually know what you're talking about. Were you trying to catch a crappy? <laughs> I don't know. I once caught a catfish with a piece of bologna off the back of my grandfather's boat down in Florida. <laughs> so that was pretty, that's my fishing story. Um, other than that, a lot of lot of tales of what we called bobber trees, uh, bobber trees, which were trees hanging 
kind of right above where most people tended to cast their line, and there would be a lot of bobbers stuck up in it. So, oh, you're going for halibut. One of the few white fishes that I'll actually eat. I am not a not a big fish guy, which is weird because I like pretty much everything. All right, so. All right, so that is a keeper. I am definitely going to be buying that. Um, all right, so I'm going to pick another random whiskey here. <sighs> Just going to give this thing a minute to spin around, maybe drink a little water. So I'm glad that the uh, the whole tax thing didn't didn't go through between the UK and the US. That would have been so stupid. I, I don't know if you guys know this, but basically the... Um, I think it was the we were going to be getting more taxes on UK steel um, so in turn they were going to tax no we were going to tax them more and oh, what was it I think I have it backwards one way or another we were gonna get screwed on bourbon um, basically we were going to end up paying more for bourbon just across the entire world um, because of the way that this whole thing was going it's just not to get political but man like what is Trump doing <laughs> Like, and I get that that's not necessarily just him, but just, I'll leave it completely at that. Um, I, I honestly have no dog in the fight. I didn't like either candidate. So, uh, just leave it at that. All right. So I'm going to pick this guy right here. What are you? Compass box by street extravaganza with two of them on the, um, spinny thing here. It was not a surprise that I picked one. Mistake of the sea. <laughs> Eric, I've caught, I've caught some tuna with a can opener before, too. All right, so this guy's going to go in the middle because I have yet to know. But since it's compass tree, I mean, sorry, compass box, I can almost guarantee you I'm going to like it. I'm kind of a compass box fanboy. So let's see what we've got. Spice tree extravagante. So this is roughly 100 bucks. Wow. Um... Okay, I'm not going to read any of the description because I want to take a take a stab at it myself. So, ooh, that's a cool nose. Immediately chocolate. Um, very interesting. And you guys can read what... So, once again, I, I grabbed all of these things from... Um, I think it was either Mas Master of Malt or Whiskey Wash or something like that. Um, just to have something up there to kind of confirm my own, my own nose and, and taste against. Um... You know, like I, I always give my own notes, as you guys know, during the videos, but I also will often take my own notes and then go compare them to what other people think. Because um, even though, you know, you guys want to hear my opinion, like I don't want to just sit there and be like, well, this this bourbon smells like vanilla and caramel and oak because <laughs> that's boring. You know, it's the same thing with everybody. But if somebody gets something and then I also get it, then I'll add it to the list. Um, I do not add it to the list if I personally don't don't smell or taste it. So, all right. Anyway, yeah. So it's like bittersweet chocolate. As an extremely powerful uh, part of this nose, actually, I'm having trouble kind of smelling past it. Maybe some orange peel in there. Hmm. Yeah. Kind of like um, like a really toned down version of one of those like orange chocolate oranges. All right, so let's see what they got. So they've got <clears throat> waxy orange peel. All right, uh, peppercorn. I didn't get any of that. Milk chocolate. <laughs> okay, uh, jelly tots. I'm guessing those are jelly beans. Um, and nectarines. So I didn't get any nectarines in there. Um, what's the ABV on this? It's 46 yeah all right you can always tell <laughs> when you when you nose it and all of a sudden it burns um all right so i got a couple of those let's see what we get in the taste cheers uh, actually this one is to let's see what do we got um well <laughs> let's say this one's to compass box because i have yet to ever have anything that i didn't like from them i'm going to assume that this is equally good so this is what I want from you guys before I take my next dram. I want some suggestions of what I should what I should toast. Um, I will toast anything anything that goes up there. So to compass box. Hmm. There's a bit of a bite in there. 
Um, I mean, forty-six percent, and I'm not watering these down. Let's see. Wow, that's a. There's a lot going on there. I think I'm gonna have to take another sip before I even really take a stab at it. Um, heard the extravaganza is older selection than the regular spice tree. I'm going straight for the bourbon tonight. What are you drinking, Santa? <clears throat> Sorry. I honestly am not really getting a heck of a lot of anything. It's just, um, it's good. I'll, I'll give it that. But it's it's so well blended. The only thing I can potentially get is, is after taking a sip, when I inhale through my mouth, it's got that dryness that you sometimes get with like a sherry. Um, or like a, you know, red wine in general. But <laughs> Tyler. <laughs> Thank you, Tyler. I appreciate that. I was actually expecting uh, I was expecting some sort of funny remark or something. Oh, let me move that up there, actually. Uh, da, da, da. Where are you? Alert box. Move that up. All right, cool. Um, <laughs> well, thank you, Tyler, either way. Hmm. I got to be honest. I'm not sure what I'm getting from this. I think I need to add water to it. But I have water over here, but I don't have any um, anything to really drip it in. So you know what? I will. Let's do this. I'm gonna try to just get a couple of drops in there. Let's see if I can make a difference. Okay. Well, I can see all the oils kind of going right up to the top there. Um, so I'm gonna give that just a sec and then see what happens. So I was doing a little bit of research on exactly how water affects whiskey. Now I know that this is something that kind of came out um, actually several months ago where yeah, pretty much everybody decided that it was a good idea to add water to your whiskey. And I obviously, I think it's good. Um, I just more have this different standard of like everything coming out of the bottles should be the way that they want me to drink it um, unless it says otherwise on the bottle or on their website, which luckily I, I happen to look, but let me pause myself. <laughs> Santa. You're awesome. Thank you. Hmm. That changes the flavor a little bit. Um, you know what I just realized? Is he drinking Johnny Walker Red in that? No. What is he drinking? I'm looking at the um, the little gift that plays of Dr. Evil there. I'm going to have to look at that a little bit more closely. I certainly don't want to be promoting uh, Johnny Walker Red here. All right, so I give up on the taste here. Let me, let's see what they say. So they got ginger and poached pear. All right, so I don't really know what a poached pear tastes like, so that's that's part of the problem. Hints of thyme. I no clove that that I could maybe see. And manzanilla sherry. Okay, so you do have a little bit of the sherry in there. Um, yeah, I'm still gonna call it a, a fail from my point of view of of being able to taste all of the nuances in there. Um, Let's see. So, oh yeah, so let me finish that thought. So the, the whole idea of adding water, as, as you all know, the idea is that it takes the, the, what are they called, esters and lipids maybe? Yeah, the fats basically, like all the, all the stuff. And it kind of makes them rise to the very top and kind of form across the top of the, of the uh, whiskey. So the nose will get better, um, like pretty much right away. Um, and your first sip, if you're very gentle, that's why you saw me take a really slow sip there. You can sometimes get a little bit of different because it's more like it concentrates it. Um, so it's it's a good thing to do. But personally, I just don't. Um, I just I have had pretty good luck so far with the nosing and the tasting and all that stuff. But I th I feel like a lot of those little tiny nuances that I don't always pick up because I'm not a, a master, you know. Um, whatever I'm not a master whiskey drinker I'm just a guy who has picked this up as a hobby and is kind of sharing sharing what I learned with you guys um, anyway so it's not I feel like I'm not missing a whole heck of a lot by not adding water and in my mind it's I'm taking a kind of a stand that something should be the way it's supposed to be right out of the bottle especially because they have the ability to add water and kind of pare it down whatever anyway so Santa I will be having some some bookers a little later um, for sure but for the moment, I'm uh, gonna see if anybody else is generous. I'm trying to buy a new microphone, um, not this one. I want to get a new lavalier mic. 
So I'm, uh, I'm hoping for a couple more Super Chats, but we'll see. Um, either way, I'm still going to keep going with you guys. So I will say that I don't like this one as much as the Glen Goyne 12, um, which is kind of funny because this is, this is about two and a half times the price. Now the nose on, on the Spice Tree is phenomenal. Like it's, it's almost unreal how much how chocolatey the nose is. But the Glen Goyne just overall, I personally like a little bit better. So anyway, that's, that's my opinion. We'll see. Let's see, what do we got? Poached pear tastes like sugar. I can pears and they're all poached, okay. I add water to anything over at 45, blah, blah, blah. Maybe I'm doing the, hey! <laughs> so my dad just popped in, hey dad. I'm guessing mom's with you. Um, anyway, so keep quiet all that stuff I was saying about, about my dad there, so I don't want him to know. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> all right, let me reorder these things because I'm gonna pick another one in a sec here. Move these around. Come on. There we go. All right. This thing's really cool, isn't it? <laughs> uh, Ardvig Dark Committee CR is at 55 ABV and had a numbing bite. A drop was an improvement, but it was freshly uncorked whiskey. So I'll be reviewing live again on Sunday. Cool, Eric. If I um, I've actually Sunday is Easter, and I've got something else personal I'm going to have to attend to on on uh, Sunday. So. I may or may not have time, but I'll make sure to check out the the um, replay because I'm very curious to know what you think about that. Um, <laughs> Santa, you're the man. Santa and Tyler are some of my biggest supporters. So I'm uh, actually, you know what? All right, Tyler or and or Santa, give me what I should be toasting for my, my next uh, dram here. Anything you want. Anything that you want to hear over your, your own TV spoken by some random guy on the internet. What's up, Whiskey Music? How you doing? This guy's going over to the negative pile. That being said, I still liked it, just didn't love it. Um, probably one of the weakest from Compass Box that I've had. Um, I've only had probably through, well... Let's see, I've had the Oak Cross, I've had the Peat Monster, I've had the No Name, I've had the... I didn't have the Phenomenology. I, um, there were like two more I had, but I was already like legit like 25 drams in. <laughs> Not drams, I was 25 tastes in, so it was way too much. Um, let's see, Tyler, Tyler, give me something good. And I'm going to pick something at random. All right, so let's see, I'm gonna pick a number of four. So we got one, two, three, uh, that's the spice tree again. I'm, I'm just going to put that one aside because you guys don't want to see that twice. All right. Especially because it wasn't my favorite. All right. So let's try again. Uh, doo -doo -doo. This one. Ooh. Okay. Now I'm excited. <laughs> Is Swami in the chat? Because he'll enjoy this. Let's see. I'm gonna grab another Glen Cairn here. All right, Tyler, I can handle both of those things. Um, might be slightly over a hundred bucks, but we'll see. Mm, wow, Petey. This may become a problem with the rest of the tasting for the rest of the night. All right, so this is not a luxury risky. I have not had that one either. Um, okay, so let me nose this. <laughs> I, I suspect I'm going to get Pete. Um, all right, so let's see. Mmm. Oh, man, I love Pete. I'm, uh, I'm right up there with Bart. Well, maybe not quite as much in love with it as Bart is uh, from Scotch Test Dummies, but he's, uh, he's a bit more of a Pete head than I am, but I, I sure do love a good Pete. Peated whiskey. Oh man, that smells wonderful. There's, there's something behind the peat, and I'm trying to get at it. There's almost a sweetness behind it. Um, let's see, this is eighty bucks. It's actually, seriously affordable. Let's see. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> 
You know what that smells like? It's it's kind of weird. There's almost like a chlorine smell behind the peat there. Um, that was unexpected, actually, but it reminded, like, as I was just nosing it right then, excuse me, it reminded me of being a kid, and we used to have an in-ground pool at the house I lived at until I was about 14. And um, at one point or another, I helped my dad um, do the, uh, you know, the, sh the chlorine and the shock <clears throat> and, you know, the pH and all that stuff. And I remember the smell of the chlorine kind of going into the pool. And it would always, you know, it would be like kind of that, that dust in the air. It's, it's definitely got a little bit of that right behind the smoke. And that's, that's an interesting thing to smell. Hmm. Huh. All right. So let me uh, take a sip of this. So Tyler to, let's see, hold on. What was it? You, uh, all right. To Tyler being a new uncle pretty soon. And the hundred dollar whiskey I'm going to suggest for you is Highland Park Full Throttle. Um, comes highly recommended by Whiskey in the Six. And it's one that I've personally just put off buying more than a few times. I think it's a little over a hundred dollars, um, but it, I think it'll be worth it. So cheers to you, buddy. Hmm. Okay. That's really good. Wow. Man, Swami's not wrong when he, he, he gushes about, uh, Kilcoman, huh? He's, um, he's a big fan. I know that. And I think he's tried several of them. All right, let me see if I can pick out anything from this. It's not as smoky as you would think. Actually, I wouldn't even say that's necessarily the first taste that you get, um, oddly enough. So if you were to try to not breathe while you take a sip, um, you m might not even, you would think this was something that was peated, not necessarily just a straight up peaty whiskey. All right, let's see. Hmm. It's very dry. <clears throat> it's uh let's see. I'm kind of thinking that this has a it's almost All right, so when you when you have a normal peated whiskey, right? Everybody compares it to like, you know, smelling a campfire, you know? And that that is kind of along the same lines, but this is this tastes like Instead of tasting like the smoke off the campfire, this tastes like licking a campfire log, <laughs> or at least what you think that would, might taste like. I can't speak from experience. Um, it's it's the, the the flavor in your mouth is the smell on your clothes the next morning. It's it's um it's very very oily, like very oily, and it's smoky obviously. And what else, man? I'm trying to pick out something else behind this. I'm not getting much of anything else. So, all right, let's see what we got. <clears throat> so on the nose, we got oranges and lemon notes. Didn't get that. Rich, smoky peat and cooked fruit. I don't really know what cooked fruit necessarily sounds like. Uh, means that's that could be so many things. Like, that's an apple pie? Or is it a cherry pie? Or is it a blueberry pie? Is it, you know, who knows? It, you just throw in an apple on a fire? Who knows? All right, so <laughs> the taste is rich chocolate, cinnamon, and cloves. Cloves. That's that's what I am picking out here. Um, that's good to know. I'm gonna try to make a mental note of that taste being cloves, uh, combined with peat smoke. Okay, it's actually good that they put peat smoke right at the very end there, because that was definitely one of the the last things that I was noticing about the taste. All right, let's see what else we got. Drinking cheap vanilla cognac. I make no apologies, nor should you ever. Um, oops, wrong button. All right, uh, let's see. Eric Waite should be interested. I could try. Da, 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 da. Gil Coleman, I should I mix it with Diet Coke or normal? Um, I would say Diet Coke because if you're gonna commit sacrilege, you may as do it. May as well do it twice, especially on this Good Friday. Um, which, by the way, like, how weird of a name is that, right? Like, I don't know. I read it. I read a thing earlier today, and it was just kind of like. You know, man, uh, man dies, goes to heaven, and meets Jesus, and sa and Jesus says, "Hey, uh, you know, how you doing?" The guy's like, "Oh, great. Um, it's weird that I died today." And the, Jesus is like, "Why?" He's like, "Oh, because you know we're celebrating the day that you died." And he's like, "Oh, really? That's that's interesting. What's it called?" And the guy's like, "Um, Bad Friday." <laughs> yeah. So, I I always thought that was such a weird name for it. 
Um, let's see what else we got. Usually taste iodine with Pratt smoke. How about you folks? Uh, what's going on, Jason? Whiskey wise. Oh, did I say full throttle? I meant full volume. I'm sorry, full throttle. I'm thinking um, whiskey throttle, because he was on uh, he was on that same stream that night. Fruit compote in jams, jellies, preserves, or pie. Okay, so I mean, but that still could be a lot of things, though, Eric. I, I appreciate the clarification, but um, you know, not to be pedantic, but it's it's you know that's so wide. It's like saying you know this smells like dark fruits. It's like that's so many different things. I don't know. Some of these, some of these uh, whiskey reviewers, they just, I don't know. I don't get it. If you can't pick out a specific flavor, general, generalizing doesn't really help. Is this something you have to learn to like? Um, yeah, I would say, I would say peated whiskeys are kind of an advanced style of whiskey. Not to sound silly about it, but I mean, if you if you're trying to get somebody in a whiskey. It, I could see giving them a peated whiskey so that they can see kind of where they're going to end up, but it would almost, it would be like, all right, think about coffee, right? So if you give somebody a coffee for the first time, you're not going to give it to them black or an espresso. You're going to give them something with like cream and sugar because it will make it a lot more palatable. palatable. Um, but you know, you, I could also see giving somebody an espresso the first time, just if you wanted to be like, if you keep drinking uh, coffee, you're going to like this someday. But I don't know. That's kind of why like in that, that, um, scotch for beginners i mentioned that you should introduce somebody to a peated whiskey usually with the yard bag or with the log of um Lefroig. but uh yeah I, I don't know i would not start out at a um a beginner on this all right usually get screwed on releases like fall volume i wasn't pleasantly i was all right uh sounds like a winner yeah i think i missed something there i'm whatever I need some of this. This um, this PD whiskey is like killing my taste buds. I'm I'm a little worried that I'm not gonna be able to get any of these. So we've got the Johnny Walker 15 uh, green, the Glen Scotia, something that looks lighter than practically like water. <laughs> so that thing is gonna get oh tealing, yeah, that's gonna get overpowered. Talisker might not get overpowered, um, but yeah, we'll see. Booker's won't get overpowered. So, um, all right, let's see. Let me finish this guy off. So forgive me for shooting this. I just kind of want to want to throw this back and, and move on to the next one. I do like this a lot, though. Um, this could be something I, I could see doing an episode on. See, one, one of the problems, though, like when you're doing these episodes, is that like I would have to spend some serious time with this whiskey in order to pick out anything other than smoke. And I don't always have that kind of time. Um, but either way. All right, so I'm going to throw this back. Um, once again, cheers to you, Tyler. Hmm. That being said, I'm gonna move that to my yes pile. Just a little bit aside though. Cause like I, I absolutely positively wanna buy this one. Like I might buy that one later this week or something, but um, I don't know that I'll buy this one anytime soon. Certainly not gonna be in a hurry for it. I've been uh, having a lot of luck actually reaching out to distilleries lately and getting them to send me stuff. <laughs> so. I uh, may try to do the same thing with Kilcoman. We'll see. One thing that I'm very excited about, like extremely excited about, is Woodford Reserve. They have this brand new offering that they're doing. It's a cask strength. So I know a lot of you will really appreciate that. Um, so it's going to be their regular Woodford Reserve distiller select, I'm pretty sure, except cask strength. And they are doing this out, uh, aside from their normal yearly um, master whatever the heck they call it master reserve something or other um, they're going to do it in the spring and I got in touch with a brand ambassador to, uh, yesterday excuse me <clears throat> and he said that he would try to hook me up with a bottle so we'll see either way um, I've seen some poor reviews of it on reddit uh, which makes me a little scared you know kind of like a two and a half out of five but I don't know. I mean, I love Woodford, Woodford Reserve. It might actually be a little hard to keep my bias away from it, but we'll see. All right. Hoping for a um, <laughs> an 80 proof on this next one. Do I... Oh, Jason Whiskey Wise. Uh, let's see. 
A lot of scotch whiskeys are quite heavy on the caramel coloring. Just because it's almost clear does not mean it will, bl it will be bland. Oh, yeah, no, totally, uh, Sam. I wasn't even suggesting that necessarily. Um, well, actually, I, I, I guess I kind of was. Um, so, no, fair to call me out on that. Um, I guess I was more thinking that compared to a peat or maybe something with a little bit more, more color, but... Yeah, it's tough. I hate that they use caramel coloring at all. Like, I get it that you want to have a consistently looking product, but I I feel like if everybody just stopped using caramel coloring, I don't think anybody would care. Not in this day and age where people are more well-informed. Um, all right. Let's see. What else we got? Brukladek. I'm hoping I'm saying that right. Has ones that will rock your socks off. All right. Um, all right, so let me pick next one. So I've got four left. Um, all right, this is what we're gonna do. <clears throat> Everybody in the comments, whenever you can, put a number one, two, three, or four. The third one to come up will be where I'll count. I'm just making it complicated for, for randomization's sake. So let's see those comments. Go one, two, three, or four, whatever you want. Um, and because of the stupid delay, I'm gonna have to wait about 30 seconds for you guys to respond. <laughs> So, let's see, what else? Man, I can't even like tell you guys how much I liked that Glen Goyne. Hearing somebody, I forget who it was, I think maybe Go Habs that was saying that the 15 year old was even better, or you know, the 15 year old was good, I'm guessing it's probably better than the 12. All right, so we got four, four, and four. Interesting, <laughs> four. <laughs> I know you guys are doing that on purpose. All right, so I'm gonna count four. So this is number one, two, three, and four. And there's the tealing. All right. <clears throat> I think I might have to go get some more uh, Glen Cairns. I do have one hiding over here for my bookers because I knew that was about to happen. Yeah, so I know I used to do the whole like, you know, give me X amount of dollars and I'll bust open the bookers. But honestly, it felt a little bit too much like begging, and I don't really like it. So um, in general, it's more of a, if I get any any Super Chats, then I'll drink the Bookers. And I have already gotten a couple. Don't let that stop you, though. But I, uh, you know, I don't need to beg for, beg for anything. All right, so let's squeeze it out. There we go. So put that on the chopping block there. Let's see what we get. Go Habs, I'm very jealous. I kind of really want that. What's going on, Hans? Welcome to the chat. Thank you for coming. How many of you are there, by the way? Let's see. 32, that's not that many. That's unfortunate. Well, oh well. I'm happy for the 32 of you that have shown up. I'm a little bit, con like, I'm, I'm a little sad, because you would think with uh, as many subscribers as I have, I would have more people come on. Um, but oh well, I would love this this uh, live stream to have like you know a hundred people in it. I think that would be fantastic. But we'll have to see. One of the guys I watch all the time, um, Nick Nimmin, he, he kind of does YouTube advice. He's got like 160,000, and his his um, live streams only have like 150 people in them. So it's I guess maybe I'm setting my sights too high. Um, I'm also not consistent with my my days that I go live, so that probably has a lot to do with it. Hmm, nose on that's not great. So I do know that I um, suggested the tealing for kind of an intro to Irish whiskey, and I have had it before, um, but not for a little while. I just know that it's it's fairly cheap and it's well well respected. But that being said, I, I don't know that I uh, have nosed this in a super long time. So yeah, you know you got a good point. It is Good Friday. A lot of people are trying to be uh, you know a little nicer to themselves today, and maybe not not <laughs> go um, <clears throat> what's the word hedonism <laughs> I think that's the right right phrase um, <clears throat> heretic we'll see all right hmm all right so the nose oh let me throw this up here for you guys da -da -da, da -da -da. boom what a cool looking bottle by the way is this is this the Phoenix it just says tealing uh, tealing single malt I know that there is a tealing Phoenix uh, is there no, there's another one called Phoenix. It's something I did recently. Um, Telemore Phoenix? Yeah, Telemore Phoenix. All right. 
<laughs> Nose is getting better um, the more I get used to it. Is this, what is this? 46%, wonderful. That makes sense. I was starting to wonder why it was burning because I, I assumed it would be toasted. <laughs> All right, mom, block your ears. Uh, cheers to you, Jesus. <laughs> Hmm. Ooh, that's interesting. Ooh, I like that a lot. I don't remember that happening. So that is like, oh man, that's great. It's like a, a really strong candy, fruity, almost like um, almost like a strawberry candy. You know those little, you know those little candies. They look like, <clears throat> they look like a strawberry with the green top wrapper. Um, I hope you guys know what I'm talking about. It almost tastes like that. That's interesting. I don't think I've ever gotten strawberry in a whiskey before. Um, hmm. That's really good. I'm, I'm just going to jump right to what they have because uh, at this point I've already had you know three and I just followed up with a peat. I don't think my, my taste buds are quite going to be where they were. All right, so the nose, we got cut grass and orange blossom. Um, let me add a little bit of water because I, I want to see if, if I agree with the cut grass. I don't know that I would necessarily um, pick up orange blossom if I if I smelled it, but let's see. I guess I could see it. Only after adding water, though. Hey, thanks, William. I've been calling and visiting local stores looking for the Booker's Kathleen's Batch. No luck yet. Neither have I, uh, William. I've had zero luck. I've called four places that should have it. And none of them do yet. I think that they're just, um, all right, help me. Look at this thing. See if you guys think it's, what is he drinking right there? Is it black velvet? I think I see a V. It's hard to say. All right, so anyway, um, we got, let's see, allspice, hints of vanilla, apple pie, and blackberries. Okay, actually, you know, I totally get the blackberries. Um, I'm gonna, gonna change my answer from the strawberry. I, I still think I smell like that strawberry candy, but not necessarily strawberries. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the blackberries. I like that. All right, let's try this again. Hmm. Yo, the taste is delicious. It really is. Creamy vanilla, hints of dried herbs and cinnamon. I'm not getting the cinnamon. I do get the creamy vanilla. I like that a lot. Um, I don't know what petal jelly tastes like. <laughs> Last time I, I don't think I've ever, I don't think I've ever crushed up rose petals into a jelly before and then licked it. I <laughs> can't say it's a thing I do on my weekends. Um, but you know, apparently that's what, what separates the men from the boys here when we were talking about, uh, whiskey tasters, but <laughs> the snozberries taste like snozberries. Hmm. All right, I love the taste of this. I um, I didn't bother buying the tealing for the you know Irish whiskey month that I had here, but I uh, I may end up getting it like in a few months or so just to just to go over because I, I actually really like this. In fact, this is gonna go in my buy pile. I'm gonna put tealing over here right next to the Glen Going Twelve. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I don't make rose petal gel, jelly. I mean, I know that I know it's probably a pretty common thing, but not not for me. <laughs> Strikes me as one of those things that Starbucks would come out with those those awful looking foods that they have like just decaying next to the counter, ugh, right next to their cake pops, which are delicious. But man, I swear those those foods that they have out there they've been up there for like a week. Ugh, disgusting. <laughs> All right, William Knight is a twenty. Uh, yeah, it's a twenty eighteen release. It's the twenty eighteen oh one. It's the Kathleen uh, Kathleen's Catherine's. I forget. Is it Kathleen? Yeah, Kathleen's batch. So I guess Kathleen was some sort of. Um, I don't. She was some somebody who had to do with actually making the bookers for like a really long time or something like that. I'll I'll find out more details when I do the actual video. I reviewed three tealings for St. Patty's Day, small batch, single malt, single grain. Really liked all three, 
but single malt was my favorite. Let's see. This is just the regular single malt Irish whiskey, which, I mean, yeah. It, I mean, it says it's a single malt Irish whiskey. I don't know that it was a single grain if it was that one, though. Um, good night, Jason Whiskey Wise. Have a good night. Pleasant dreams. <laughs> You're a creep, go Hebs. But we all knew that. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> those of you that have been here for most of the time probably heard me say earlier today, I mean, earlier tonight, that uh, I had filmed five episodes yesterday. And that is true, including today's episode. <laughs> so I cut that one a little bit close. And those of you that are patrons know that because I, I was apologizing profusely for not doing the whole uh, early release on that video. Um, I think I ended up releasing it this morning at 2 a.m. Um, so the fact that it's almost 10 o'clock right now and I'm still going hard is because I've had a couple of Irish whiskeys today, Irish coffees today as well. <clears throat> so um, anyway, so I did five videos yesterday. I did one that I'm going to keep a secret. <clears throat> which I think I might release not this upcoming Friday, but probably the second Friday of April. Excuse me. <clears throat> this Friday upcoming, um, like a week from today, is going to be the uh, Glen Murray Sherry. <clears throat> and that's to go along. Jeez, my voice really is cracking. Sorry. Normally it doesn't have this big of a problem. <clears throat> anyway. So, um... The Glen Murray Sherry cask is going to be my Friday video this week, next or you know a week from today, and I'm doing that to kind of coincide with the live stream on Wednesday. And I can tell you guys ahead of time that I liked it. Um, the amount that I liked it, I'll leave a mystery, but it was good. So if you guys are interested in buying a bottle of it for the live stream and or the review, I will tell you 100% you should go buy it. Um, it's like $30. <laughs> so it's a pretty, pretty easy investment. Um, they also, Glen, uh, Glen Murray is doing a peated, um, or like, what is it? They have, they have all these different expressions now. So like they have the regular Glen Murray, which is only like 25 bucks. It's like totally, in my opinion, like a hidden gem. I love the Glen Murray, um, especially at that price. It's a, it's a single malt scotch for 25 bucks or 26 bucks, something like that. And um, they do a sherry cask finish and then, or sherry, yeah, sherry finish. And then they are doing some sort of peated version of it. And then they're doing a Chardonnay cask. Uh, I know Eric's going to rip me apart if I say cask when it should be barrel or bud or hogshead or whatever. Either way, a barrel that had sh um, Chardonnay in it. And then there's a fifth one that I can't quite remember at the moment. Um, either way, I'm actually really excited to try them all, and I think that I'll probably end up getting a few more of them, especially at that price point. It's pretty easily affordable. So I did the Glen Murray Sherry, and then I did the Mystery one, and then I did Bushmills Original and Bushmills Red Bush. And I don't know when those are going to come out necessarily because I also have a, um, I have a Bullet bourbon barrel strength which i was able to get a bottle of from the um from one of the brand ambassadors as well reached out and just asked for it because you you basically have to buy it in kentucky and i've been to kentucky once and it was awesome actually twice and it was awesome um but i haven't gone back for a long time and i don't think i'll go back for quite a while unless i decide to do a bourbon trail or something like that Either way, very hard to get your hands on. And I didn't feel like paying $20 to ship a $50 bottle. So I asked them if they would send me one, and then they did. So did a review on that. I was actually just editing it probably about two hours prior to this live stream. And um, that should be going out probably in a few weeks or so as well. Let's see. What else? Uh, Hans, were you watching from us or? U.S. or Canada or whatever. All right, I must be an amateur. Cannot taste the difference after the third whiskey. So, John, don't worry. Um, you're not alone there. I uh, I have a lot of trouble kind of getting actually pretty much any of the nuances after the third one, too. That's pretty much my limit. I Even, even when I'm doing my review on whatever, I will try to write all my notes before my third uh, dram. But mm, sometimes the third one comes along, and maybe I'll even get something else, but it's rare. Um Drink more water. Yeah, I've been drinking water. Um, probably should drink more, but oh well. Just... 
<laughs> uh, let's see. Practice for. Uh, I'm trying, but it's like going to wine tasting after the third drink. It's all the same. So, um, speaking of which, I am going to a beer tasting tomorrow. Uh, very excited about it because although I love beer and I actually like totally can can get a lot out of beer. Um, it's not something I study in the way that I study whiskey, but I um, I really like beer. And I'm going to this thing. I forget what it's called. It's called like the Brew Woo. B-R-E-W-W-O-O. And um, it's in Worcester, uh, Massachusetts. So that'll be really fun. I'm doing that tomorrow. And I'm probably going to re- wake up with a hangover, especially because I have yet to hit the bookers. So I'm going to have to make sure I chug a lot of uh, water before I go to bed. All right, teeling is down. Let's bust out the bookers. Boom. Dun, da, dun, da, dun, da, dun. <laughs> oh boy, that's a heavy pour. I still have yet to finish off the 2017 This stuff just goes slow. I mean, this is for those uninitiated. Uh, uninitiated this is 125.9 proof or 62.95%. So that is a beast. Um, I'm so excited for the 2018.01. I shouldn't be because looking at even the metrics of my videos, like some of the other whiskey tubers uh, occasionally give me crap for being too much into the analytics um, or thinking of this too much as a, a um, you know, not just a passion, but like as something more. But you know, it's hard to ignore. Like when I do the, the bookers videos, they don't get nearly the amount of traction that like an 80 or $90 bottle should get me. Um, so I've been trying to get together with bookers to basically send me bottles, but have not had that luck yet. We'll see. Being over the 10,000 subscribers has really opened a lot of doors for me. So that, that helps a lot. Let's see what else we got. Um, No shout outs to. Oh, all right. I pull a quick a lot. I drink so much water. <laughs> I love that that's a thing. That makes me so happy every time I see it come up. Poor Quig. <laughs> all the dude did is go to the bathroom. I mean, he does like seven hour live streams. You can't just not go to the bathroom. Um, I usually do, you know, one and a half hours or so. And, you know, it's not a problem for me or whatever, but. If I were sitting here for five hours or four hours or whatever, totally would. All right. So, any last super chats before I have a sip of this? Um, the the option is available. Um, but as promised, I will give a shout out to Santa Cruzen, to Tyler, and to William Knight for your super chats that have earned the rest of you the right to watch me act like an ass after having some bookers. Look at that. Hold on. I'm going to I'm going to get up and show you guys this color. Look at that. Look at that. That's beautiful. It's like it's like the amber from Jurassic Park. <laughs> There's like a little mosquito in there. All right. So, cheers to you guys. Very good. <laughs> I'm actually getting, as this 03 ages, this is, um, I don't remember where I ultimately rated it among the other 2017s, but it's starting to be at, it's definitely not the 2017-02. That thing was just, that was beautiful. Um, it's, sorry, I got distracted by the chat, which is ironic because Santa was saying because there's less chat, it's actually uh, easier to read. <clears throat> the 2017 O2 was beautiful. If I ever see another bottle of that, I will be buying it 100%, and you all should do that. But the 2017-03 is growing on me. I remember not not really liking any of the other 2017s very much. Like, I think when I rated them, I had them, like, 2017-02, and then maybe, like, 2017-03, 04, and 01. <laughs> so. Mahogany. Yes. My... My library smells of rich mahogany. 
What is that that Food Quick does? The Anaconda? No, I can't do it. He does like... All right, anyway. It is very, very good. And I'm happy to have this. It's interesting, though. I'm still like... I remember calling out that it tasted a bit like cigars. And it still totally does. Um, I find that interesting. I don't recall any other whiskey that I've tasted cigar or like cigarette or anything in. Man, that thing's got a burn to it, though. Jeez. ECBM. Uh, Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Yeah. Man, the, um, the acronyms kill me sometimes, especially when I don't know them. But I do know that one, but it's just I have to think about it. Uh, hey, Santa, you're pulling out the bookers. All right, which one are you pulling out, buddy? Anybody else got anything over 100 proof in their, in their bar? Um, you've been with me long enough. I'm going to keep going for a little while. It's only 10.07. Um, I'll be on till at least 10.30. So if you've got something over 100 proof, you guys are enjoying me drinking this crazy dram, you need to go and get yourself a bottle. Yes, you. And go get yourself a bottle and pour a dram and join me. It will be much more fun for all of us. It smells like fine Corinthian leather. leather. Uh, if you add, all right, that's interesting. If you add water to Ardbeg, now which Ardbeg, Eric? The Ardbeg 10 or the, the Dark Cove one that you've been doing lately? All right. Let's see. So I, I'm um, swirling this on purpose because I, I like to kind of aerate it a little bit. Um, personally, I just, I don't know. I find it's, it's a little nicer at that point. It dulls it just a little tiny bit. Excuse me. Hey, thanks, Whiskey. Appreciate that, buddy. 428. Is there any uh, significance to that? All right, hold on. Watch this. Hold on. Uh, come here. Uh, where are you? Where are you? Alert box. Get bigger. Oh, I just missed it. What is he drinking? I'm going to leave that huge so next time it comes up, we'll all be able to see what he's drinking. <laughs> All right, so 2015-03, which one was that? Well, I can't type at this point. Laptop's too far away. Um, drinking Ben Remark 10. Is that how you say that? Ben Romek 10, 114 proof. Not barrel proof, but I'm enjoying some Noah's, Noah's Mill. What is that, Emra? I've never heard of Noah's Mill before. I find water makes smoke turn to ash in many peated whiskeys. Interesting, Eric makes sense that I wouldn't know that. I, I often just don't add water at all. So whiskey music. I want to know what the significance of $4.28 is. Is that uh, is there any reason? Or did it just like convert it from $5 some other currency or something? So we got a red breast cast, cask strength. Jeez, even when I'm not drinking, I have trouble saying cask strength. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, da, da, da. What it was? I should have put three dollars and thirty-three cents. <laughs> no, that's all right, whiskey. I like the four twenty-eight more. <laughs> it's an older bottle before the batches. All right. So, just to give you guys an idea, um, has a T-bone. Oh, T-bone steak. I've seen that one. Um, I don't remember. All I know is that Booker No like to do barbecues, so it's not surprising. I'm curious what it. Yeah. Um, anyway, so just so you guys know, because I've been kind of pushing the, the uh, Super Chats a little bit tonight, as I mentioned, I'm looking to get this new set of microphones. So it's two microphones. One's a receiver that sits on top of my DSLR, my camera. And then there are two um, separate channels, each coming from a separate wireless lavalier mic. And a lavalier mic is like what I wear in my normal reviews, where it's like it attaches right here. You usually can't see it, especially if I'm wearing black. Um, sometimes you can, and I don't really care. <laughs> but what I'm, I'm trying to save up for those, they're about $170, $180 or so. And, um, you know, it's not a big deal. I'm sure I can save up for it easy enough. But that's that's part of the reason I'm kind of pushing the Super Chats tonight. I really, really want to get those mics. That way I can do, um, like, in-distillery uh, interview kind of things. Because I... I've always found like having a microphone to be kind of tacky. I I get tacky is not the right word. It just feels old, like old fashioned, you know, like you should be able to have a wireless microphone and give it to your guest 
and have them be able to talk naturally instead of being like, you know, what do you think about that? Oh, yes, that's very interesting. You know, it's like, I don't know, that just feels very unnatural to me. And uh, that's that's part of the reason I'm getting them. I'll probably get them either way. It's just the Super Chats help. So, all right. Um, oh, whiskey music. You were doing 333 for the next choice. Okay. All right. Well, let's see. What do I have left here? Johnny Walker Green Label. We got Talisker Tenure, which happens to be my dad's favorite um, or second favorite. I'm not sure if he likes Old Forester more or not yet. And then you've got Glen Scotia Victoriana. That one I'm actually pretty excited about as well. I hope I pick that one. We'll see. Kentucky Spirit, 101 proof. Um, so Noah's Mill is a no-age statement. So that's that's interesting. Is it new? Oh, it's from Willet. Okay. Interesting. Okay, it used to be 15-year-old, but they removed the age statement. That's that's interesting. So I do have a bullet bottle of the Willet um, Funky Bottle, the, the one <laughs> that looks like that. One of my uh, awesome viewers here sent me a bottle of that. And um, his name is, well, he goes by Big Army Guy. I'm pretty sure it was him that sent me. He sent me two bottles. It was that and then the Elmer T. Lee um, barrel proof something like that and i'm still waiting to do my reviews on them um and if you're watching this in the future big army guy i apologize that i haven't done those yet it's simply just been a lack of time and this uh irish whiskey month kind of threw me off because i had to come up with four episodes that weren't things i already had um other than the uh flaming leprechaun intrusive what do we got all right if you put your hand over your ear like old radio and speaking in mic that would be retroactive um, that's kind of funny. <laughs> I wish I could do that. What, what is it called? The North Atlantic, um, accent. Uh, I can't even think of what to say here. Whatever. All right. You guys know what the, the one I'm talking about. The old timey radio speak. All right. Man, this bookers. Oof. All right. I want to pick one more of those and... I'm actually going to, I'm going to just hope for the Glen Scotia. So this one right here is the Glen Scotia. I'm going to try to um, let it go around. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to like kind of hedge my bets, not hedge my bets. I'm going to try to game the system and make that be the one I choose, but we'll see. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about the, all right, so I, all right, here, here we go. Do you guys just want me to pick the Victoriana or do you want me to do random? You guys tell me in the chat and then we'll see. So it's the, the Johnny Walker Green, the um, Victoriana, and the uh, something else. Talisker. So you tell me. Is, should it be the Wheel of Mystery or the Wheel of Predictability? Either way, I'm going to go get one more... Uh, Glen Karen glass. So give me one sec. I'm just going right over here. I got two. <laughs> just in case. I actually cracked one of my Glen Karens yesterday. It was very sad. It was, uh, cracked in my dishwasher so not even my fault all right so let's see what's the verdict grab the one you want random i like chaos well william knight gave me a super chat so i'm more inclined to go with him <laughs> um talisker emrez or blah 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 man i need should have gotten more water That Booker's is brutal. <laughs> oh, man. So, any of you guys out there, uh, gamers at all, do you guys play video games at all? I've been playing Final Fantasy 15 on PS4 recently, and uh, it's pretty fun. I like it. I'm um, having a good time with it. I don't want to talk about video games if you guys have no interest whatsoever, but it's something I could talk about for a very, very long time. Um, so, luckily, 
my friend and joy are you close to mass actually i would be interested to know that too santa if you're close to massachusetts excuse me actually no i know exactly where you're from i'm sorry you and i have had emails back and forth before and you have your signature on them so all right i'm gonna let fate prevail here so let's do the same thing that we did before uh you guys throw up a number and i will choose that that one so let's say the fourth person to put up a number is going to be the one i choose so i'm going to push this forward oh no that one's actually my clean one that's the one that the next dram's going in so go ahead we got a three i'm assuming that was for me Trying to game more on your off days. So what are you playing, Tyler? Yeah, man, the, the battle system is is pretty fun, but it's weird. Um, all right, so we got a three. So one, two, three. That's... I, I miscounted. <laughs> this one's number three. <laughs> Yeah, I cheated. All right, I don't care. I'm opening it. All right, so this one is the Glen Scotia. I mean, I, I want to have this one, so I'm going to do myself that favor. <laughs> uh, that was pretty funny. All right. So Glen Scotia Victoriana. Let's see what we got. Bought an ETL in November for $38. Spotted one... ETL. What is ETL? My brain is failing me at the moment to try to put that one together. If you give me like one word of it, I could figure it out. I'm just got nothing. There's so many whiskeys. <clears throat> I'm going to feel dumb when you say it too. It's going to be like Elmer T. Lee or something like that. Yeah, that's probably exactly what it is. Fuck. <laughs> All right. So let me throw Let me. Um, yeah, no, I shouldn't. I uh, I had every intention of doing exactly what you guys suggested. I just changed my mind last minute. All right, so we got the Glen Scotia Victoriana. Um. <laughs> How large are those samples? Uh, that's a good question. These are three ounces or three cent uh, three centiliters. So, for us metric people, I have no idea. Um, or us non-metric people, I should say. Let me take the bookers off there. <clears throat> All right. So let's see what we got here. This is 90 bucks, Glen Scotia Victoriana. All right. So let's see what we got. Hmm. Not loving the nose right off the bat. Let's see if that, that kind of works a um, little bit better. So here's one thing. I've got these these um, Glen Cairns here. And I'm going to turn this off, actually. Sorry, that's um, it was just making this weird noise, and I'm sure that's picking up on the mic. All right, so the the nose on this wasn't great. Let's see if I can open it up a little bit by by swirling it a bit. This is another one that's over over proofed. Oh boy! All right, so that is fifty one point five percent. So that's uh, one hundred and three. Wow! All right, yeah, that's. <laughs> I thought I was getting away from the bookers. Jeez. Hmm. Yeah, I got nothing. All right, so let's see. Elegantly oaky with notes of toasty sugar and citrus peels. All right. Honestly, it. I don't know that I get a whole lot of any of that. Single malt scotch whiskey. It's. I mean, it's dark. That's part of the reason I looked. I was I was just making sure it wasn't actually like some sort of bourbon finished kind of dealy. <laughs> so just so you know, John, that kind of stuff ends up getting uh, blocked. I, I let it go because I don't care, but um, it's automatically blocked. So. Hmm. 
All right, I give up. I'm not really getting a whole lot on the nose. It's uh, mostly just burny. Um, I don't want to add water before I taste it because um, I'm a little afraid that's going to change the taste. So I will probably add water before this one's done, though. All right, so let's see. Cheers to... <laughs> cheers to acting like a two-and-a-half-year-old and just doing whatever the hell I wanted to do. So cheers to that. Hmm. Tastes is good. It's got a weird, weird finish on it, though. Um, hmm. Almost like... Hmm. Sorry for being quiet. I'm trying to pick this out because uh, I'm trying to like it's actually pretty, pretty strong flavored. So like even despite the bookers, I feel like I can get something out of this. And my brain keeps going to like black cherry, uh, not black cherry, sorry, black raspberries. But I could be totally off base here. Um, it's very, very oily. Uh, really, I mean, that's that's the 50%. All right, I'm just going to add a little bit of water to this if I have it. Yeah, I have a little tiny bit left. All right, let's see. Sorry for the squeak. That was probably awful. All right, I'm going to let that sit for a sec. All right, let's see. Be happy. Elmer T. Lee is $100 here in Hawaii. Hey, Dark, you're from Hawaii, huh? I had my honeymoon there. Actually, I've been to Hawaii three times. When I was 12, I went, and I went scuba diving, and it was awesome. Um, when I was like early twenties, I went there for a friend of mine's wedding. I was his best man. And I did, uh, once again, I went scuba diving. I did a, a manta ray dive that was on Kauai. No, sorry. Not Kauai. Jeez. That was on, was it on Kona? It must've been on Kona. Yeah. Um, the big Island. So I was, I was on the big Island, went and did a manta ray dive. That was freaking awesome. Um, actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to talk and I'm going to find something because I want to show you guys this. All right, so let me let me hide this thing. So let's do this. Um, anyway, so yeah, I really, really like, I really like, um, yeah, I don't think I'm going to be able to talk while I do this, so I'm not going to, not going to try. Where the heck is this? I don't know my way. I'm around my own computer. Pictures. No, not camera roll. Yeah, I guess I have a different camera thing. A uh, different, oh, documents, that's where it's going to be. Nope, my pictures is where I want. Give me 30 seconds. I want to show you guys this. It's really cool. At least I like to think so. There it is, a different drive. All right, so we got photos and videos. This would have been 2010 or 2009. I'm not going to be able to find this. Never mind. All right. <clears throat> Whatever. I had a picture of some pictures from that, that dive. It was freaking awesome, though. So there was this manta ray. And um, manta rays are, you know, you guys can picture them if you don't know them. They are gigantic stingrays, right? Or they're totally different shape, but you can picture them that way. And this thing, it was called Big Bertha. It had a 13-foot wingspan. So about as twice as wide as I am tall. <clears throat> so I'm 6'3". And... Um, Man, this thing was huge, and it soared right over your head. It was like almost like an alien, because you have to do this at nighttime. So that you do a night dive, and you all like you and a bunch of other people. They you go down to the bottom, and you go in this big circle, and then they put this gigantic light right in the middle of you, and um, I'd say the circle is probably about twenty feet diameter, and the light's in the middle, and it attracts a whole bunch of like you know zooplankton, whatever, and the sting uh, the manta rays detect this and they come over and eat it um and you get this wonderful show of them literally just like flying over your head and it's just it's one of the coolest things i've ever seen in my life um that same dive i had for those of you that know what a moray eel is it's those huge green eels that that chill out underwater there's another kind of eel called a spotted eel and it's white with like yellow and black spots and <laughs> the spotted eel they can't see right <clears throat> or not very well anyway especially not at night and they just kind of chill out and they go down on the bottom and they they you know 
look for something that is uh, like a cave and something that's warm, one or the other or both, whatever. They just so happened to <laughs> find me. And I, I am not a cave, <laughs> but I am warm. And the vest that you wear called a BCD um, is, is like a cave. So this thing, without me even realizing it, it swam up underneath my BCD. It came out my, my shirt and then it, it was chilling right here. And I didn't even know about it until the guy next to me tapped me on the shoulder and I looked over and I saw this thing right here and it turned and it looked at me and it was just like brop, brop, brop. And I would like to think that I was a braver man, <laughs> you know, in those in those times where you're imagining what, you know, maybe somebody breaks into your house and you fantasize about how you're going to handle a situation. You just think that you're going to be this brave guy. Let me tell you, when you're under the water in some other complete different habitat and you've got this stupid snake thing right here just going brop, brop, brop. <laughs> You, it's very hard to be brave. <laughs> I, I distinctly remember having the the um, regulator in my mouth going, woo, and grabbing it by its big stupid throat <laughs> and throwing it, <laughs> which trying to throw anything underwater, I'm sure you guys all know is pretty fruitless. But I, I throw the thing, it comes out of my BC, it flies probably about like two and a half feet, not very far whatsoever, and then it just sinks to the bottom and it swims away. And I have, I have like pictures of almost all of this, and I wish I could find them. I will, I will attempt to find them and post them on some sort of social media for you guys, so you can find them uh, later and know what I'm talking about. But man, <laughs> I, I'll never forget. Like it was so muscular, you know. You grab this thing, and it was like it was like grabbing a like a gigantic snake. And, and throwing the stupid thing. It must have had no idea. It must have been just as, like, shocked and amused as I was. But um, anyway, pretty pretty crazy. Uh, let's see. Where do I get the samples from? So I got the samples from a very generous uh, viewer who sent me a whiskey advent calendar. Um, I've just happened to have them sitting around for a while. Let's see. Try whiskey when cooking a roast. Not too many in there. Pooey, yeah. Um. <laughs> well, fish also piss in it, so um, let's see. Drink more water now. <clears throat> I'll drink water after the live stream. Don't worry about it. I'm still going to be up for a few hours after I, I kill the live stream. Um, let's see. What else we got? McKellen 12 Sherry Purchase in Nashua. Wait a minute, go Habs. Where where are you from? Are you close to me? You must be close to me. <laughs> Santa, I appreciate that. Um, yeah, anybody who hasn't yet, if you're having fun and you've been hanging out, I know sometimes it's hard to remember to do so because you're just kind of chilling. Um, throw a thumbs thumbs up on the video. It will help me out a lot. I appreciate it. I don't think you all know how important. Uh, like thumbs up and interactions and comments and all that stuff is to YouTube. But without all that stuff, I don't, I don't continue to grow. Um, my next real competitor is, uh, like whiskey.com, which is a YouTube channel. They're, they're at some like 28,000 subscribers. So I'll get there pretty soon. I would think I'll probably get there within, I would say, let's see, I'm getting about a thousand subs a month, sometimes 2000 depends on the month. Um, I'm at 11,000 and a half now. So, I mean, end of the year, I'll be a lot closer. I'll be at like 20,000 or so. But I intend on doing other stuff to try to make myself grow faster as well. Because I, I want to. You know, I want that like whiskey vault. I I don't know. I uh, I don't know. Those guys, they, they blew up so fast. It's weird. Um, anyway. Let's see. What else we got? Montreal, you're in Montreal, go Habs. So, but you found yourself down in Nashua recently? I went to uh, college in Nashua. Dunstable, nice. Anyway, all right, so it is 1031. I am mostly out of things to talk about at the moment, uh, unless uh, another random story from beneath the waves comes up. 
Um, so I have had a pretty fun night with you guys. I've only got two of these drams left. I think at this point I'll probably just drink them myself because I've actually had both of them before, the Talisker 10 and the uh, Green Label. Um, the Booker's still, man, I swear, that's the bottle that never dies. Look at this thing. I swear, it, it looks the same as every time that you guys come on. I only have like one or two of these at a time because they're, they're pretty hefty. But let's see, what do we got? Keep my extra bottles and boxes wrapped in bubble wrap. I have limited space to store whiskey that way. Do you protect from earthquakes? Oh, talking about Santa Cruz. And I was going to say, I don't think we get earthquakes out here. We have very, very rarely get a very mild earthquake. But All right. Anyway, so this Friday upcoming, look for the review on Glen Murray Sherry Cask Finish. And then uh, something very special the following week. I think it's going to be another one of these like 100,000 view videos. It's, it's, I think I've identified a, what do you call it? A hole in the um, YouTube, you know, spectrum that I could fill pretty easily. So think of it like my, you know, how long does whiskey last or the decanter one. I think it's going to be up there with those. Anyway, so thank you all for joining me here on the Whiskey Dictionary. And I hope you have an awesome Easter if you celebrate. If you don't, uh, find some way to eat ham anyway, because it's delicious. <laughs> and um, I hope you all have a very good weekend. And thank you for joining me here at the Whiskey Dictionary. Have a good night.